So we meet again. You know, we keep doing this. People are going to start talking. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is Sunday, June 12th, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I like to take the opportunity and discuss OTC and penny stocks that are jumping and bumping, catching attention, stocks you should probably be paying attention to. Now, what I'm going to do today is we're going to take a broad overview look at the psychedelic sector on the U.S. markets. And I mean all of them, the OTC, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange. Now, of course, we're not going to get into all of them and a lot of them aren't even penny stocks. But I do want you to be aware of what's out there. The psychedelic market is broad and it is new. It has only been with us for about two, maybe three years at the most. And they've got a long ways to go. But folks, in my opinion, the psychedelic market is going to be huge. Far bigger than the cannabis market. So if you think cannabis is doing something, you ain't seen nothing yet. So let's jump on into this and I'll show you what I got. So probably the best place to begin is with a list. So that's what we've got right up there. This is a list from October 2021 from Bazinga of 50 psychedelic companies on the U.S. markets. That includes the OTC, NASDAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange. Now, admittedly, it's not an exhaustive list. I have found 61 psychedelic companies already. And this is really not up to date. Not perfectly, anyways. Many stocks have already uplisted to the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, so they've changed their tickers. Some have changed their names. And some companies have actually gone out of business, as you would expect. Now, psychedelics have only been around for about two years on the open markets, Cannabis, roughly 10 years, but cannabis has got legal hurdles to get over. They're not even off of the DEA list. Psychedelics aren't on the DEA list. They've actually got an advantage. That's why they're uplisting to the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, while American cannabis companies cannot. Now, the psychedelic market is not just psychedelics, that is to say LSD. They're dealing with a lot of different drugs. They're dealing with MDMA better known as ecstasy. They're also dealing with DMT, the God molecule. It is a molecule that's inside of us and a few other things in the world and is really a mystery to most scientists. They're also working with psilocybin, that is the chemical from magic mushrooms. Mescaline, this comes from peyote, the cactus. There are lots of different drugs they're using, including ketamine. Now, of all the drugs that are in a psychedelic arena, Ketamine is the only one that's not a, let's call it a street drug. Ketamine has been around for over 50 years. It is a disassociative anesthetic. That means it blocks your pain, but it can also knock you out or give you hallucinations if you take enough of it. And they are really working with this too because it has already been FDA approved. Ketamine has been used. It has been proven. So there's lots of people behind ketamine since they don't have to get over those hurdles of getting any more approval. Now, these companies are focusing on a variety of ailments and disorders that they're trying to resolve, including dementia and Parkinson's disease. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of companies out there that are focused on those two and they are making headway. But they're also looking at eating disorders such as bulimia, anorexia, and binge eating. But what really impresses me is that they believe they can eradicate bad habits, addictions. They think they can cure alcoholism or a gambling addiction just through LSD. You see, the thing about LSD is it's kind of like a therapist. When it comes inside, all it does is show you the light. It opens up the door so that you can see clearer and understand more. But it's not the therapist. You are. You're the therapist and the student. So you're enlightening yourself. You're seeing your place in the world, your place in other people's lives. You're seeing the repercussionary acts that you do and how they affect everybody. It's a very eye-opening experience. And this is how people can change. Now, LSD is nothing new. We've had this around for about 70 years. Just coming out of World War II, we discovered it. We actually went looking for it. We were looking for some drugs, some chemicals to take advantage of our enemies during the Cold War. Now, I'm not talking about chemical warfare. I'm talking about drug impairment. Make a truth serum so that you can get them to tell you things. Or make a pill that makes them zombies and do whatever you tell them to do. That's what they were after. Well, they discovered LSD, 
and boy were they excited about it so they immediately started doing experiments except not all their experiments were legal they were dosing people in hospitals universities and prisons some with their permission many without and i got to tell you folks if you ever get caught in a trip and not knowing that you're on lsd you're gonna freak out you're going to think that you've lost your mind or that you've entered a different dimension or you're out of your body. You're not going to be right and you're going to freak out. So I hope that never happens to you because it can be a scary thing not knowing. And you really should have somebody with you, somebody that can watch over you and control your environment because whatever happens around you is going to affect your mood and LSD just magnifies your mood. So, we want to be real careful when we are on this stuff. Now, one of the experiments that they did, which was an excellent one, was at the Concord Prison in 1960. They got a total of 160 patients, and they presumed that they would have 7 out of 10 prisoners returning to prison after they got out. However, on the LSD program, it was amazing. Out of 160 patients, only six came back to prison. 154 were cured. I don't know what you want to call it, but they will tell you out of their own mouths that it was the best experience of their life and changed their life. However, there are other people that didn't do so well. There was one prisoner. Let me see if I can get his name here. His name was... Uh, Whitey Bulger. He was in prison. He was arrested in the 1950s for bank robbery and he was one of MK Ultra, the CIA's group that was dosing people with LSD. They dosed him. Well, years later he ended up murdering lots of people. He got busted for racketeering and ended up back in prison and he blames his lifestyle on that drug. Well, he robbed a bank before he ever did the drug. So let's not go there, okay? And it was also at this time that Life Magazine did an article on LSD and they talked about magic mushrooms and it was the first time the word magic mushrooms was ever used. So you can thank Life Magazine for that. We've jumped over here to Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform. If you don't have one, you absolutely need one if you don't have one. Unless you're holding your stocks for five to 10 years, yeah, you don't need a trading platform then. But otherwise, you absolutely need one. And you can get this one for free just by signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. You don't have to make them your number one broker or anything. Just keep your account open and you can use this bad boy just like I am. So what I've got here, this is that list. I told you I went out and I accumulated all the psychedelic stocks I could find across all the markets in America. And I got 62 of them here. Now, did I miss any? <laughs> it's kind of a silly question. Would I know if I did? Uh, what I do know is I got 12 more than were in that previous list I showed you that only had 50. So, <clears throat> not bad. What I've also got here are two time frames for our charts. First one, I'm going to keep on four hours. I want to see a big picture. I want to see if it has an uptrend, downtrend, what's going on. And then I want to see how it's setting up against the major SMAs, the 200 and the 50. So this is an important area to consider. Also on a five-day, five-minute chart, because I want to know what's happening right now. I want to see if anything is setting up, right? Just like this. That's just about ready to get on top of that 200. And we know once the price gets above the 200, there's a stronger likelihood it's going to take gains. But in saying that, I honestly don't see a whole lot of jumping and bumping going on in the psychedelic market. The psychedelic market is in research and development. They're still proving a lot of stuff. They're still setting a lot of stuff up. They've only been here for two years. It's a lot like cannabis was when all they were doing was buying buildings and buying fields. So there's a lot of setup, a lot of money being spent right now. Not a lot of money being made. They're still looking for big investors. Um, some companies are making little revenues. You've got one company, it was in that news that was going by in the blue video. They have a retreat over in Jamaica where you can get psilocybin and trip at their hotel. You know, do whatever you want to do there. I don't know what they got going on, but it's all legal there. Well, we've got stuff like that happening in the States now. 
the state of Oregon, the entire state has decriminalized. Michigan, Massachusetts, Denver, these three states have got municipalities. Certain counties, certain cities have decriminalized psilocybin. That's not to say it's legal, but you can't go to jail for using it. Now, if you're selling it, there's a whole different criteria for what you've got to meet if you want to be a seller. But as a user, have fun and enjoy yourself, but only in the municipalities that allow it. So I really don't see a lot of jumping going on right now. I see a lot of buying opportunity, and I do believe that these companies are going to be bigger than the cannabis companies. And you got companies out there doing multiple hundreds of millions, a half a billion dollars every three months. You really do. And this is before they get tax deductions. So why do I think that they're going to make more money than cannabis? Primarily because of the pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies will not touch cannabis because, well, to be honest, it's a hassle, it's a botanical, and it's too cheap. It's too cheap for them to get rich selling their drugs the way they do. Nobody wants to have a cheap cannabis drug actually replace an opiate if you are the owner of that company. You don't want to see that, and that's what's going on here. They don't have to sell a quarter ounce for $245. They can sell a few molecules a few molecules for a couple hundred dollars. And that's what they're charging, three to four hundred dollars a session, seven sessions a month with some backup sessions over the next six months. So, you know, you end up paying thousands of dollars to trip. Man, I remember when it was four dollars a hit. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Oops. In any case, folks, right now is a buying opportunity. But before you go jumping into anything just because it's cheap, you really do need to do your due diligence. There are wars going on right now, patent wars. There are companies that are loading up on patents because patents is the only way they can protect their investments. However, LSD was already found and discovered years ago. Psilocybin is a natural element already out there. So you cannot patent these. But what they're doing is finding ways to change the way they extract it, change the way they dry it so that it comes together differently or melts and dissolves differently. And they're patenting that when really you can't do that. So there's a lot of wars going on right now. And one of them that has got the best patents out there and is probably going to put every other company out of business is Compass Paths. I will tell you more about them when we get to their ticker. So all I'm going to do is click these like we've got right here. As a matter of fact, that's not a bad one. Um, and since I'm not going to be reading every single ticker, there's too many of them here, I'm just going to enlarge this one right there and I'm going to put it right there. That should make it a wee bit easier for you. So we're going to just start up here at the top. It really doesn't matter what order we have them in, but I do have them in with the most volume. This one had 2.3 million. This is mind med. Again, I'm not going to read them all, but occasionally I will. This one actually has a nice setup on the four hour. As I was showing you, you got the 50 day crossover on the 200. We've got the price crossover on the 200. This looks really nice. Now it has fallen, but I expect this to come back up, maybe fall again, back up, sort of stitch itself, right? Stitch itself into there, make it secure, and then take off. However, technicals look real weak on the four hours. It doesn't show any pullback at all. However, we do see after three days of falling, right there is a pullback and she is coming up. Now again, I'm not talking about any serious gains, but this is one that is in the news often. And the companies I see in the news most often are the ones I see getting activity. May not be a lot, but they are catching rips. They are in there occasionally. And that was over many days, so you do have to have some patience. Next one we got here. This too has been running downhill. Again, it's got a crossover here. 50 is just about ready to cross over. This is Seal, S-E-E-L. She crossed over with, with her price here and has had a pullback the last day here. She fell down and is bouncing back. And if I remember correctly, Friday at the end of the day, the big markets were all tumbling, tumbling, tumbling really hard. Even after market, they were still falling. So this was going against the grain of most of the markets, showing some strength. Technicals actually look pretty strong down here. Not ripping it or anything, but... She could possibly get back up to, oh, what, about 80? And she's at 73 right now. So maybe a 10% gain on that one. 
ENVB running downhill, getting close to that 200. It has been working its way up for about two weeks, coming off of that 200 haul. Two weeks is a run. I mean, you know, it's been volatile. There's been a lot of ups and downs here, but she is working her way up. And you can see it even on the short. She is working her way up, as I said, with a lot of volatility. And none of these really have any big news that you're going to see coming out. As I said, they're all phase trials. They're all making advancements with patents. They're all challenging each other with their patents, but you do see some deals being made between companies. Not a whole lot going on, downhill run. She's sitting on the 200, but she was going sideways on that spot before the 200 got there. Nothing really happening there. I've seen this one mentioned in the news a few times, ATAI, definitely a downhill run, not showing any enthusiasm whatsoever. Cybin, Cybin just got uplisted here not too long ago from the OTC. I remember when she was there. She has broke her 200, has come down, and you can see she's bouncing off of it a couple times, staying above it, not even ripping through the bottom. 50 has already crossed over. We had a downhill run here for quite a few days. She has put herself back on top of the 200. You might see something come out of this one. Again, you might see maybe 20% jump. This could get up to 79.80 safely. I don't know if she's going to actually go any higher than that. No real catalyst. Nobody's making any real money yet. Uh, this one is a little different here, right? We got a four-hour chart where she took a big dip and a huge, giant jump. My goodness. That was uh, 150%, 170% right there. That giant rip. And then she gave most of it away and then took another giant rip. So you can see this one likes to bounce a lot. Technicals don't look too great uh, on the four-hour. Over here, she looks like she wants to get back up to that 200, to be honest. I just kind of had this feeling, which isn't a very big move. She's going from 33.5 cents to 35.5 cents. So she's not doing a lot. She's just doing a lot slowly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Compass Paths. This is one of the primary psychedelic companies you need to keep your eye on. This company started off, and I may have a few of my details wrong here, but I followed them when they first came out. They were a non-profit organization. They were not in the business to make any money when they started all of this psychedelic research. And they were working with other non-profit organizations. Well, at some point when they had gotten enough information, they changed their mind. They broke free from all of their non-profit organizations, went to make a profit, and then started filing patents. And one of their primary first patents here in the USA, and I believe the UK, gives them all rights, basically, to psilocybin. They've come up with a way that doesn't really alter it, but changes the way they processed it. So they've gotten hold of it. And now anybody that comes along with anything that's not different than theirs, which is pretty much the base, they're not going to be able to sell it. So people are coming up with new ways to extract it, new ways to crystallize it, new formations. Uh, but unless it actually has a difference in how it affects you, how it comes into you, how fastly it responds to you, the patents are worthless. So there's a lot of activity and Compass has already been sued multiple times by other companies and it's going to continue that their patents are illegal. You cannot say you own the right to psilocybin. Just with that little bit of change, that makes it yours. So there's a lot going on, but if it doesn't change, Compass Pass is going to be able to use their patent to push everybody, most everybody else out of the market. Now, they're working with psilocybin. So the companies that are working with LSA, ketamine, MDA, they're not going to be affected, of course. But when it comes to um, psilocybin and LSD, these folks have got some very serious patents. I think they're on their... Oh, I don't know if it's five or 11 patents that they got in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and is it France? There's one other company out there as well. And you can see they were up here at $61 just five months ago, and they are now hitting lows of $6.50. And Friday, she was just under $10, 10 bucks. And she is trying to get up to that 200. Boy, she pulled away. But this was a hard day in all the markets, folks. This was a hard day on big markets across the board. And this is a NASDAQ stock. So she felt the tremors. There was no way she couldn't. When that big wave came through, the whole market felt it. And it was rough. 
But you can see she was on a rise for many days here, approaching that 200. I wouldn't be surprised if the market just eases up and there's no burden on it, it's just a crazy world, that this will probably go right back to running going towards that 200. Let's back that out just a little bit. And I would see her getting up to about this point right there, which is $12.45. And on the small chart, she, like I said, she was running up, riding right on that 200. She got a little skittish here, and boy, Friday was a terrible day. But again, she actually pulled something out at the back half of the day when most of the market was not reacting that way. It's a little interesting. And we got a huge bar here after market hours. So Compass Pathways is a huge company that isn't yet making money, but they have the patents that's going to secure them more of the market than the rest of them put together, most likely. I would do your DD on this. There's a lot of information out there. You're going to have to really search around to get it. But Compass Pathways could end up being the giant in this sector, in my opinion. All right, some more companies we got here. Downhill, you can see everything is running down here. She's just running on her 200, though. Geez, look at that. On Friday, she started running. Started making a play for it on a day when everybody else was falling. PHRRF, looking like everything else, had a high back here of 62 cents and a low of about 8 cents. Again, multiple days of running up. We can see this. Just like she had here, a nice run, and then it all fell away. So you've almost got to start wondering if she's willing to get above these highs. This would take her from 13 cents to 15 cents, but that is right at the 200. So if she can actually make that support, chances are she's going to rip through there. But without any real catalysts, without any revenues, none of these companies are going to continue ripping past the 200. Not in my opinion. Running downhill, not showing any strength at all. This is Truff. Truff has had a lot of activity. Same direction, 18 cents down to 5 cents. Everything is running downhill. GHRS, a lot of bounces here. A lot of volatility, but boy, she definitely swings when she wants to swing. I wouldn't know where this one was going to go. Revitalist. All right, we looked at this a long time ago. That's what these blue lines mean. That's a timeline for me. We looked at this way back then, and that was when we looked at it. Right after we looked at it, it fell. But folks, if I told you anything good about this and it did that, I do sincerely apologize. What a bloody fall. That went from 50 cents, oh my God, down to 12 cents. Yikes. You can see a huge pop here. You got to wonder about what sort of float this has. Here comes the 200. She hasn't been doing a whole lot of volume. That's why she hasn't got a 200 yet. And it looks like she's on a low bubble. Yeah, she's on a low bubble right now. Is that a one-year low? Let's look. Sure is a one-year low bubble. Last time she got this low, she jumped hard, folks. She jumped hard. Uh, she went from uh, six cents up to 16 cents. She had about a 250% gains when she hit a low back here. I keep my eye on her just for that low bubble bounce. You could get that off here. I see she's already started to rise, but she could click and get a good spike jump like that. All right, let's see. We're moving on to Numif downhill run, showing no strength at all. Psych core again. With a high of almost two cents and a low here of almost a thousand percent down of double zero two. Sub penny stock. Nova Mentis. Lots of activity. Had a 13 cent high. Fell down to two cents. Right now is at seven cents. About in the middle and sitting right on the 200. Been fighting with that 200 for quite a while. Doesn't look like she wants to go anywhere else. More downhill run. Does look like the last couple of days she's broke the 200 on the five minute. I don't know if that means anything. Uh, she doesn't show any real power down here. She's just showing she's warming up. She is warming up. Avicana, Avicana, really? Are they working with the. Maybe they're working with somebody who's working with psychedelics. This is a company that is working with TBPMF. Uh, they are into cannabis, so I'm not quite sure how they ended up on my list here, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I added too many and didn't forget any. We have Trip F, 200 just coming into the picture on this four day, 51 cent high, 4 cent low. Wow, what a difference. 
We are just hitting the signal line. Technicals look pretty strong here. I see a breakout over the 50 right now. She is getting over the 50. Volume looks to be increasing. Do, 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 do. I keep my eye on TRYPF. She shows a, a little bit of activity on the four hour chart. Let me take a look at the 20 day one hour. Well, she's got some big bounces. Let me see what sort of bounce that is. That's going from five and a half cents up to seven cents. Wow. So you're looking at 35, 40% bounces in one hour. That's what that big one is right there. So you got 25%, 30% bounces here, pretty much average. So she does give big bounces on the one hour. Technicals are getting weak. Let's come down to that five day, five minute again. Pharma drug. Pharma drug has found her 50 day host and has been beating her head against it and really not doing anything but going sideways the hard way. We sauna. We sauna has been falling from almost four dollars down to 12 cent low, and we are at 15 and a half cents. What sort of bounce we got there? 13 cents up to 15 cents. That's exaggerated. Let's bring that down. So not a whole heck of a lot going on with that one either. Midasin Innovation. That's a that's a yearly chart. Let's come down to that four hour. Not a lot of activity here, for goodness sake. When was the last trade? That was Friday, absolutely was. And when was this? That's uh oh, that's only a month of trading. She must have changed her ticker because we've only got a month of trading here. And I know this company's been around longer than that. Maybe it had a D behind it because it went through some change. Uh yeah, see? Now this goes all the way back to September. And the very last date we got here is the 19th. It sure is. So they had some change. There was a D. Whenever you see a D behind the ticker, it means they changed the ticker, they changed the name, they changed the share structure. You really don't know until you do some due diligence. But something changed, and it changed on the 19th and the 20th of last month. And what, let me back that out again. What were they looking like? Because I've seen Midasin in the news quite often. So she's been falling really hard. No doubt about it has been trying to get close to the 200 but not doing a whole lot with it you can see we don't even have a chart over there for it uh let's come in on that i'm just going to go to the next one because she is running downhill there's no doubt about that is that our five minute that is sort of jump you got there you're going from two cents to three cents well that's a 50 percent jump right there folks yeah it is from two cents to three cents that's half of what two is. So that's a 50% jump and that's a 50% drop. And she has been falling all of this time, not showing a whole lot of invigoration. All right, we got Graph Blockchain. Graph Blockchain, with a name like that, you'd wonder why it's on the list. And I can't tell you, but I was doing a lot of due diligence. I was finding pieces of news that had the word psychedelic in it, would read it. And this came up. I can't remember when, where, or how, but it did come up. But it's not doing anything, so there's no real reason to keep your eyes on it. This is Allied Corp. It was going sideways until it wasn't. And then it was going down. Down, down, down. And it's gone from $2.15 down to $0.62. Cents. It looks like it's on a downhill trend, though I do see a crossover imminent here. She could bounce back up to somewhere up here, which would only give her about a nickel gain on $0.63. Cents. We have another downhill run for Nova Mine. Nova Mine is in the news often. That's where you get these jumps from. That's what that's about. But she's not hanging on to anything like any of them are. Delic Holdings also in the news. Again, you can see the bounces, but she's had a low here of about three cents when she was at 31. So you're at a thousand percent drop there. This was all based on excitement. Just these companies coming into the game. So, you know, right now this is world affairs. There's no excitement for psychedelics when you're worried about getting to work because you can't afford gas or, you know, keeping your electricity on or maybe trying to find a job. I know jobs are out there, but Whatever the case may be, psychedelics, not at the top of our list right now. So again, I tell you, these are buying opportunities. Don't put your mortgage down on it, but by golly, get something. Just do your due diligence. Find a serious company. Drug, I was reading some serious news about this company. You may want to look them over. They've had news. That's what you got the bounces for. I'll guarantee you, if you look at the dates, they will correlate to these bounces. When you see bounces, you know they've had news. These are companies that are keeping their investors in the loop and it keeps the price bouncing. This is going from like, uh, 
95 cents up to a dollar 11 you know it's doing that same bounce over and over again which is about 15 percent bounces right there all right i don't know this is advisor shares trust i do believe this might be an etf an etf is a basket of the same kind of stocks so PSIL is an ETF that invests primarily in psychedelic stocks. So they'll have a whole bunch of different stocks that they've been doing their DD on. You can count on that. So if you just don't want to try to pick one of the psychedelic stocks, but you think the whole sector is going to go good, and you just don't have a clue which companies are bad or good, trust an ETF. An ETF is going to do their due diligence. But remember, they're investing in everybody's money. And if the entire sector falls, the ETF is going to fall with it. So you can expect this to look like every other chart. We've got a high here of $10.91 and we are down to $2.38. And boy, she has been taking some hard drops here in the last couple of days. Technicals are looking a bit sick. Silo. Silo is one we see in the news often. That's giving you your action on this chart. She's jumping here from 14 cents to 24 cents. Uh, that's giving you 70% gains right there. Some big bounces, some big drops. She's down here at a low average, right? Right here. So I would expect her to bounce back up anywhere in this area, anywhere in here. And she's now at 14 cents and she has a high of 24 cents. So you could grab yourself some there just on a bounce. Don't hang around for long. Doesn't look like she likes to keep them either. In Canix. Ooh, wow. Ooh, look at that. A high bubble of $96. Holy cow. And she had a low of just under five, and right now she's at five. I don't know a lot about this company. My God. Did they just come on the market then? <coughs> Excuse me. It's back this up for a year. Yes, they just came on the market. Looks like they came on at about $15, somewhere in there. A lot of excitement. People had faith in this company. You may want to see what they were looking at. Was it the management? Because there was no history on the company when people started bidding like this. This took a, a whole day. That was a whole day for it to move up that high. So there's probably going to be some good information that you can tag into management, uh, investment companies, something. Because that is one heck of a high price. Is she doing it now? No. Right now, she's falling, 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 falling hard. So if you do find out something nice about IXHL, wait until she falls some more. Doesn't look like she's coming up. The technicals are still digging down to the center of the earth. Awaken life. Awaken. Yes, Awaken has been in the news, believe it or not. Boy, she has been falling hard here. We don't even have a 200 on our chart. Don't even have a 50 over here. Let's go see what news I had for Awaken. There's something striking me. So taking a look at Awaken Life Science Core, we're going to do that over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do due diligence on an OTC stock, simply because it's never outdated. FINRA and the SEC update this site every single day. Why would I go anywhere else? So ticker AWKNF, Awaken, finished the day just over 70 cents and almost 11% down. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials. That's good information. It's legitimate information. They got all their green ticks over here, so they look real good. Uh, what was the relative volume around the company on Friday? God, she's only doing about 5,000 shares a day, and uh, Friday she did 6,000 shares. So you can see these stocks are definitely under the radar. What is the share structure on this one? Oh, boy. Hey, there's a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. We got just under 8 million shares in the float. Most of the share structures I have seen have not been small whatsoever. That is one of the smallest I've seen on a psychedelic stock. Financials? No, no, no. No money. Nobody, hardly anybody's making any money. Nobody's got any product right now to sell. Everything is still in development in one way or another. With the drug, the advancement of the drug, the company, who they're doing business with, where they're doing business, which actually leads me to the news because this company is working around the world. They're not waiting for things to break out here in America. A lot of these companies are out there internationally. Now, this news is all from this year. This is from February till now, right up till now. And the companies that are producing news on a regular basis, they're the ones getting the price activity. 
just makes sense, right? So back here in February, they filed a patent application for a new class of intactogen-like molecules. I have no clue, but I'm sure we can find out if we jump in. I'll let you do that later. The company receives regulatory approval for flagship clinic in London to begin delivering treatments. So they're going to be doing business in London, over in the UK. So that is going to be a start of income. And I don't know what they're going to charge. Completes phase one of its drug discovery program. Provide shareholder updates on three operational ketamine-assisted therapy clinics in the UK. Completes world's first ketamine treatment study for a range of behavioral addictions. Remember, they have to prove that what they've got can fix what they say it can fix. So they need lots of evidence, lots of studies. And that's what's going on right now. Lots of studies. All of these psychedelic companies have got universities and colleges and companies doing studies and research for them with a lot of patients. And then the most recent piece of decent news here was at the beginning of the month, the company initiates follow-on behavioral study to focus on gambling disorder. So you can see there is a lot of news coming out, but it's, it's developmental news. It's hopeful news. It's speculation. We don't know what's going to happen with any of these companies, but as long as they keep bringing forth evidence that what they're doing is working, then things are going to continue to evolve. Because I'll tell you what, I have seen the FDA moving these trials through quick. Boom, 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 boom. And if they come out and they say they've got something that'll help I don't know, say Parkinson's disease or, or something else that has no drugs to help it yet. They'll give it an orphan designation, which means since there's nothing else out there and this helps somehow, some way, even a little bit, we're going to let it skip phase three because you've already proved yourself safe. We're just going to let you go out there on the market. And that's when they're going to start making money real fast. All right, back to the charts. Well, when you take a look at the chart for Awaken, it doesn't look like anything special is going on. I like the company, but to be honest, it really doesn't have anything above and beyond any of the other companies, except they're coming out with regular news presses. That's about it. Everybody's doing the same thing, proving what they've got works and getting patents for it, making alignments, but nobody's making any money yet. So until they get to that point, who do we know who to invest in? Well, the only thing I can say is find companies that have alignments with lots of other companies. Companies do their due diligence. You can trust that if they want to do business with the company, they must be a decent company. So that's one of the things I look for. So Awaken Life is falling. If you like the company, I would wait. You're going to get a better price here real fast because not a single technical here looks like it's coming out of the grave yet. Small Pharma, she has been running downhill. I can see we looked at this one too. Out of curiosity, how did we do on that one? Oh, we did better. We looked at it here, and the next day she jumped up to there, and the third day there. Not bad. So we looked at that one in time. But now, might as well leave your hands off of her. She's not doing a lot. This is Spliff. What a ticker. S-P-L-I-F. I thought they were only a cannabis company, but I must have saw something about psychedelics today, but it really doesn't matter. They are running downhill. There's a low bubble for today, Friday, although she has bounced back off of it just a tidbit, not a whole lot. Mindset. Mindset has been falling with a lot of jumps, but she has hit lows. Must have news. I know of mindset. Now, there are three minds I'm aware of, mindset, mind medicine, and mind cure. Now, don't get involved with Mind Cure. I just read news that they're going bankrupt and they have said by their own statements that they're getting off the market. So Mind Cure is a no-go. Mindset, she's falling too. She's not doing any retreat right now. So if you do your DD and like Mindset, Optimi. Optimi just made a deal, I believe it was, with uh, Let's Go Check Together. I can't remember their name. Yeah, I thought I remembered this. This is Filament Health. They're also on the list. They are a psychedelic company. We just haven't looked at their uh, chart yet, I don't believe. But you can see that they've been making deals with a lot of companies. Their most recent news, which caught my attention the other day and I posted it, Filament Health cultivates 70th 
Psychedelic Mushroom Variety announces annual general meeting. They also just made a deal with Jaguar Health. They signed a letter of intent to develop botanical prescription drugs for a mental health indications. And here's what I wanted to show you. I knew I had seen this. Optimi Health enters into psilocybin supply agreement with Filament Health. Let's take a look at this piece of news. Won't hurt us, will it? No. So they tell us here that Optimi Health a homegrown Canadian company producing natural, scalable, and accessible mushroom formulations for transformational human experiences, nice wording, huh, is pleased to announce that it has entered into a supply agreement with Filament Health, a clinical stage natural psychedelic drug development company. Optimi has been engaged by Filament to supply psilocybin mushrooms cultivated in Optimi's recently inaugurated 20,000 square foot Princeton, British Columbia facility in the form of whole dried mushrooms fruiting bodies for potential drug development okay so we've got a deal there you've got one company supplying another company their mushrooms but back to the news for this company and we're gonna see its ticker you can see another deal here Pisense and filament health enter into exclusive license agreement for natural psilocybin products filament health announces pre-IND meeting with United States Food and Drug Administration. Not sure what that one's about. Filament Health and Atma Journey Centers announced licensing agreement. Filament Health subsidiary Silo Scientific announces inclusion in Health Canada list of licensed psilocybin producers. That's a good one there. Oh, how about there? Filament Health and Cybin Therapeutics announce licensing agreement. So here's a great example. We'll take a look at Filament Health. Filament Health has got a lot of associations. A lot of companies are interested in doing business with this company. They've all done their due diligence. So I trust these companies aren't doing business with fools. So this company would be one I would take seriously just because of its affiliations. What was their relative volume today? <laughs> A whole big zilch. I don't know if there's a reason for that or just really under the radar. Nobody's interested in psychedelics. This is probably a sector that falls into Warren Buffett's strategy of when a sector is getting no love from anybody, that's the time you want to love it up. This one looks like it's being totally ignored. What is the share structure on filament? I don't know. Maybe I can look this up. No promises if I can find it. Some of these are hard to find. I'll post it up there and you'll know what it is. But our outstanding shares is 165 million. I would anticipate it to be close to 150 million. That's just the way most of these companies have been laying out. Financials, just to see. See, we got absolutely zilch. These people ain't, they're spending money. That's what you'll see, the bottom half. Of course, they got to spend money. They got to pay the bills. These, like I said, are a lot like biopharmas and biotechs. They got to spend money on research, development, all the setup, all of these expenses before they're ever making a penny. So there is a lot of expense, a lot of time waiting. Best thing you can do is buy when it's cheap and put your patience on top of it. And buy when it gets cheaper and put some more patience on it because it's going to take a patient sandwich to come out on top on these psychedelic drugs. What else can we learn here? Are there any disclosures uh, current on their financials? And no. All right, so let's go back to the charts. And let me see, we had a big jump there. When did that jump come in? Uh, that is about uh, the end of last month. There must have been some news. Maybe we missed it there, but she was at 18 cents. Woohoo! And went all the way to 36 cents. That was a 100% jump there, folks. She was definitely in the mood to run. That took uh, one, two, three, four days of running. And it took many days to bring her all the way back down. And she's virtually down to that area again. She has just crossed the 50-day SMA and is bouncing off of the 200 hall. Technicals look pretty bloody weak right now. All right, our next one is Psyched Wellness. Psyched Wellness has been running downhill as well. Had some huge jumps. I remember this in the news, so I've got to believe that these what is that? Uh, 7 to 14, 100% jumps are from the news. Doesn't anything look good? No, no, I don't see any hope for this one to be bouncing up right now. Woo-woo. We went from uh, $23 
Okay, $23 to just under $5. This is another ETF. This is BlackRock's ETF for the psychedelic stocks. Again, you can go online, just put in the company's name, and they'll tell you what stocks they have invested in. The information is available, and you can see the ones and maybe choose an ETF because you see the stocks you think are good as well. But you can see she has been falling real hard after market she had a little bit of a pullback but i wouldn't go counting on that for any sorts of profits here we have having life having life has been in the news but a while back falling downhill without any retreat core one core one has been in the news there's her bounce for it she's been hanging around the 200 it's falling right now struggling to hold on to anything looks like she's probably going to dip some more too cypher metal cypher metaverse I know the names don't work, but I may be wrong. This may have nothing to do with psychedelics, but maybe it does. You may find something in Cypher Metaverse that has to do with psychedelics, because I didn't grab these up just out of the clear blue. I was looking at articles, so and I had to transfer them over here one by one. So I'm thinking something's going on here outside of it falling down, down, down. TPIA, I did read something a little while ago about this. Why is that so far down there? Hmm. Oh, that's that spike all the way up there. Ten dollars, and we're down to a dollar sixty-three. But there hasn't been a whole lot of activity. I mean, you can see there's some huge bounces here. I bet this has a lot of news. Name of the company is My Mycotopia. Yeah, yeah. Not recently, but Mycotopia. Yeah, yeah. Months ago, I remember hearing about this company. I may have missed this piece of news there. But right now, looks like she's still going sideways, eh? Another ETF here has had a couple of good bounces, but a really bad fall. Another bounce, and looks like she's coming down again. She was at $22, but she's holding more value than most of them. She's at $17. That is not as big a fall as all the rest we've been looking at. Here's Mind Cure. I guess I did add it. This is the one I read is going bankrupt. So even though this looks tempting, now I don't know when that is. It could be a month from now. It could be a week from now. I've seen companies say we're going and they're gone. The door closed and that's it. So I don't know how long they're going to hang around, but they look like they're tempting this 200-day SMA. Let me look at the 20-day, one hour, see if there's any temptation there. Well, we've had a run for about four or five days on the 200-day SMA, 200-day haul. The haul, which is kind of like the 200-day SMA, except it takes more of the current prices into account. Although the technicals are a bit mixed, I wouldn't be putting my money on this in this market right now. Uh, Better Life Pharma, going downhill fast. Lobo, I believe uh, this is one that's going through changes. There's a D on it right now. Let's see if I take that D off and I put an F back up there. Uh, what is the last day we got here? That is uh, the ninth, the ninth. So what was the D? What was the D part? What day is that? That's the 10th. So we got one day. So it's going through changes now. Now, if I remember, I posted the other day about a reverse split for this company. I think they're doing a six and one if my memory serves. So I think they're doing a reverse split. I don't know if this shows it yet. I don't know what the price was over there. Here we are at uh, just under five cents. Let's go back to that other one. And this one is at, oh yeah, oh yeah, see? This was at uh, just under two cents, and now it says it's at five cents. Now I don't know if it's done its reverse split because it would kick this up six times the price. Six times almost two would be 12. It'd probably be around nine cents. Yeah, see, that, that would be way up there. Way up there. That, that would be somewhere up in this range, right there. Nine cents after the reverse split. It should kick this price all the way up. We can see we had a little bit of a jump right there. And then you come in on the most recent one right there. So we got a long ways to go. We're about halfway there. It doesn't show it's fallen. I mean, a lot of times you will see it hit and then just fell right back down because everybody sold. So I'm not real sure what's going on here, but it's a lot higher than it was a day before. It was at just under two cents and we are just under five cents now. 
So that's where this sits. All right, Irwin. Don't know a lot about Irwin. Are we still in our four hour? We are. Boy, she took off here, didn't she? From $1.68 up to $3.81 over a course of a week and is working her way back down with a bounce right now. Nothing real exciting to look at. Now we're getting down into super low volume. These hardly did anything the other day. From $3 to nine dollars and 28 cents and it has fallen well i don't know there's no low here because that was its low all the way back there so we're at four dollars and 16 cents and it looks like she's just going sideways for quite a while here empower i read about empower a while ago she had a big jump here that's the while ago i probably heard about and she's been falling hard had a low bubble here just a couple days ago but all these were low bubbles folks low low as it was falling each one of these were registering you think that didn't register as a low bubble it sure did and it had a jump because it was an extreme low it caught people's attention but all these other ones ah they're just kind of falling into place and this is just a low bubble falling into place so i think this is just going to keep on going these are all looking the same none of them are showing this one has very very little volume what company is that neon mind wow Not a lot going on there Media Center, even less going on. Wuhan General. Yeah, Wuhan, where the COVID supposedly started. That's the name this company's had. And it's been here from the very start of the psychedelic uh, market. However, I'm not sure if they're still working in the psychedelic market. Last I heard, they were working on something else. But they were here from the very start. That much I do remember. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Thoughtful Brands. Oh, not a lot of activity here. Falling, falling. Wow, we are at our lowest point. Triple, no, 401s. 401s. Is this even on the market? No. At four zeros, this has to be an expert market. We've only got a couple left here. Vert Infrastructure. This used to be Crop. I don't know if they actually are working in it. I don't know why this is on here. Uh, they could be. But this company had a big, big crash about a year and a half ago. I know because I got hurt by it. Primo Nutricals, very little. You can see these last ones on the list have got very little going for them. This one here. Oh, there's Filament Health. Filament Health. Yeah, this is Filament Health, the one we were looking at, right? Uh, Waken was the one that we first looked at, but then we looked at Filament Health because they did a deal with Optimi. Optimi. They also did a deal with Jaguar. They did a deal with uh, Cypher. They did a deal with Cybin. So this company has a lot of deals. I like this company. This chart to me would be more of one I would study. Obviously, it has been falling down, but not at the same pace that we've been seeing, right? I mean, it really isn't. And they've got some good bounces in here. What are these bounces? It's going from 17 cents to 30 cents. Wow. So those are 80% bounces right there, folks, at those prices. This bounce down here went from 11 cents to, that's another 80% bounce. And here we've got two or three days worth of growth going on. She is starting. She has broker 50. Now, this is one, as I said, a lot of affiliations, a lot of news, no revenues, but they show they're moving and they're letting everybody know they're moving and people just want to be in on something moving. And a lot of people believe in a psychedelic market and they're looking for somebody who's not sitting on their arse. And this company could be one of those companies. Right now, it is at just over 12 cents. Is that where we're at? Yeah, just over 12, just under 13 cents. And what was her high? Let's go back again. She had a high of 36 cents in the last six months, in the last year, 36 cents. But again, that is based on doing nothing. And that 36 cents was probably when she had less going on for her than she does now. So the company is growing. They're doing more and more. You can see that she does get attention when news comes into the game, which is really what you want. Think about it. You don't have to stay in her for the long run. As long as you know she's doing these sort of bounces, she's coming down, do do do, and boing, bouncing. She's falling, coming down, and boing, bouncing. You can see that happens quite a lot. So when you start to see that pattern, which it has been dry for a while here, this may be the start of it again. Technicals are starting to get stronger. RSI is pretty wimpy. We do have a crossover here in a positive direction. So 
You may want to watch this stock, and even if it falls, even if this one falls, this is a stock that I like that we just looked at because of its affiliations. I can't say it anymore. When others start believing in the company, then I believe in it too. And these companies know what they're looking for, so I trust them. So this is looking pretty good at the very moment. So what do we got there? Backing it up. So we do have some good bounces coming here in the last couple of days. Let's back this up to the 20 day with that. That is the 20 day one hour view. Wow, what is that bounce? That went from 11 cents to 16 cents. So that's a 50% bounce in one hour. What are they looking like on the five minutes? <laughs> All right, she's not getting a lot of volume. What was it? Uh, uh, did, did we look at, oh, she had zero. That's right, how could she have zero volume? There's something moving there. I'm getting my numbers confused. We've looked at a lot. So that's a stock I do like, Fox folks, is Filament Health. Universal Bogain. I did read about Bogain. i not remembering what I saw, but boy, she is falling hard. She's hit a new low bubble here. Volume is super duper low. Cresco Pharma. Downhill run. Clear mind. Not showing any hope of recovery. And the last one we got here is Biomind Labs. Ooh, naked as a jaybird. So there you go, folks. We have gone through a ton of these just looking at the charts. And you can see it's a downhill market. None of them are coming across right now as winners. This is a buying time, but this is a time to be doing your due diligence while they're falling. When you come back, you can pick yourself up a better deal. Let's go see if I do have some information on a few others while you're here that we can pick up over at the OTC markets. Another company that's not making revenues but are doing things and they're talking to their people, but they do have products, is Farmether Holdings. P-H-R-R-F. Finished today at 13 cents, just over 7% lost. They too are on the middle tier, so they've got audited financials. They got all their green ticks, so they look secure and they look solid. Now, this company just came out with a new deck. A deck is like a brochure, and they tell you everything they want you to know. And they've got some real good information in here. Now, it's not making them any money yet, but they've got stuff they're doing. And one of the things they've got is micro needle patches. Now, they're working with ketamine. They're working with it to relieve depression, pain, Parkinson's disease, ALS, seizures, and other things. And this is one of the ways that you can have it administered is these micro needle patches. Now, the micro needle patch will work on any medicine. I mean, you know, it's just that sort of thing. So they could make money with this with a whole lot of other companies. They are working with ketamine and they've got a self-administering wearable pump that works on time and gives you as much as you need. But this is all going to take time. Here they give us a time breakdown and you've got three years just sitting here for what I'm showing you. So as long as you're willing to wait, there is money to be made here because the market is falling. And I'm telling you folks, this is going to be a huge market. And sticking with companies that have other companies aligning with them, that are producing evidence to show what they're doing is working, that are getting patents, check out if their patents are being challenged, see if they're challenging other patents because well, you want a company that's willing to fight to stay in business. Not one that's just gonna fold its cards once it gets difficult. Now, we got one other thing I can show you here, actually two maybe, um, Mind Cure. Remember I told you they're going out of business? This is the news. Came out March 16th of this year. Mind Cure Health is shutting down all operations, citing lack of funds to move forward. We could read more, but what more do you need to know? And one more stock we can take a look at is Seal. Uh, let's start from here. Seal, we did look at their chart. Like everybody else, they're falling. They fell about 10% today. They're at 72 cents. Uh, they have a float of 103 million, outstanding 106. Uh, they did less volume today than normal. They normally do 1.7, today we did 1.3. However, they had news come out just a couple days ago, June 9th. Um, I'm not gonna go into it deep because this technical stuff is dry and just plain hard to read. Clinical stage biopharmaceutical company Celos Therapeutics announced data from an in vitro study for its Parkinson's disease candidate SLS004 on Thursday, supporting its efficacy in dementia with Lewy bodies, and the shares went up 8%. 
And that's really the best you could do. Now they talk down here that they're working with the CRISPR. You know about the CRISPR, being able to work with DNA and all that. So th this looks like a very serious company as well too. Now, as I said, there's a lot of companies out there. Um, I think I got two psychedelic companies I got into, oh my goodness, a year and a half ago. And they're not doing well. I'm not even paying any mind to them, to be totally honest with you. I made this video, now I'm going to start paying mind because these are some serious depressions on a market that is seriously going to grow. I do not kid you folks. Think of how many people are in the world right now. This is not just for America. This is for the whole world. And we're talking about helping mental disorders, depression, anxiety. We have what, six billion, seven billion people in the world. How many of them do you think are depressed? And if they can come up with some way, easy way, something that really works, well, it could be huge. So there's gonna be a race here. There's a lot going on. There is a patent battle going on. You've got to watch the market very closely because they could drop out of business just like MindCare, just like that. So look for companies that have investors, look for companies that have alliances, and look for companies that have a lot of news presses. Just because they're quiet doesn't mean they're not doing anything, but it does mean the stock probably isn't going to go up. Whew, boy, that almost wore me out. That was a lot of stocks to look at, folks. Did I wear you out? I'll bet I did. But I bet you, you now understand what is going on with the psychedelic market more than most. It is depressed. There is a lot of falling on prices right now. It's not number one in anybody's eyes with everything going on in the world. But it is going to be big one day. There is no doubt about that. And the prices are low, but they're getting lower. So this is a time to be doing RDD as the prices are falling. Find those companies that have alliances, that have drug candidates that are getting uh, evidence to back them up. Look for those companies that have products. Also look for the companies that are putting out news presses. That is what you really need. You don't want to have to go searching for information. You want them to drop it in your lap. Email it to you if they can. That's how you find companies to invest in. Right now, you can be picking up some good companies at some very cheap prices. When it falls, buy some more, folks. When it falls again, buy some more. Don't put your mortgage on it. Just throw your beer money on it or your Big Mac money or whatever you're spending extra money on. Just spend it on that. And in five years, in seven years, in 10 years, it could be a Netflix. Folks, we're not kidding here. How big is the world? Right? We're talking six, seven billion people right now. And this isn't just for America. It's for the entire world. And there's lots going on. It's not just one drug. There's lots happening. And most of it is for one purpose. To eliminate depression and mental illness. To take away anxiety and make us feel better about ourselves. Well, how has that drug market been working? Yeah, it's been booming. People take all kinds of drugs, legal and illegal, to feel good. So if we can come up with something, literally, really, truly come up with something that makes people feel better about themselves, how big is this market going to be? Huge. But remember, folks, it's all about DD. This is a very young market, still in development and research. Do your due diligence. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.